G'day folks, welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about passing parameters to and from assembly and uh, C++. So each C++ compiler will use a different calling convention. The Microsoft C++ compiler that we're using uses um, what's called fast call. But after a small investigation you'll soon find that fast call isn't actually a calling convention at all. It's uh, not standardized but all that it means is that some of the parameters or all of the parameters if there's uh, four or less are passed via the registers so in the 32-bit days and the 16-bit days all the red oh, sorry all the parameters were passed to functions via the stack and the stack is just in uh, RAM and uh, since we know that RAM is extremely slow compared to the registers um, to pass via the registers they decided to call um, fast call. Anyway, we can look at passing via the stack later. It's uh, it's not difficult, but it is a topic of its own. So today we're just going to look at passing up to four integer parameters. Alright, um, I'll draw up a little table. This is the parameter number, so parameter 1, parameter 2, parameter 3, parameter 4, and subsequent parameters. This is uh, parameters greater than 4, and the size of them, if it's a Q word, if it's a D word, if it's a word, or if it's a byte, or bool as well. Boolean values are passed in bytes. Um, okay, so the first parameter is passed in um, RCX if it's a Q word, the second parameter is passed in RDX, the third is passed in R8, and the fourth is passed in R9. And any subsequent parameters? are passed via the stack. Uh, if it's a D word, uh, it's passed in ECX. If it's uh, the second parameter, it's passed in EDX. The third is passed in R8D, double word of R8. And the fourth is passed in R9D. Subsequent parameters are passed via the stack. Um, if it's a word, it's passed in CX. I think you'll start to see a pattern here, if you haven't noticed already. DX, this is R8W and R9W. Any subsequent parameters are passed via the stack. And um, finally, if it's uh, just a byte, then we use CL, DL, R8B, R9B, and any subsequent parameters are passed via the stack. Okay, so the first parameter is just passed in the appropriate size of CX, the second is DX, the third is R8, and the fourth is R9. Fair enough. Okay, so what does all this mean? Let's let's go over to an example and we'll pass um, some parameters. Uh, I've just got a standard little C++ front end here with a single function called passing parameters. And uh, over here in my assembly I've got that function. It doesn't do anything except return it at the moment. Uh, I've put up here a comment just so that we can um, remember the order of these registers for the uh, Microsoft fast call. Okay, so first of all we'll pass one. Uh, let's make it an int, shall we? Int a. We better print something out so that we know what's going on. Um, the function returned and go maybe 67 and line. Okay, so that's obviously red because we're not returning anything at the moment. It returns an int brus. Okay. Um, so back on the uh, assembly side of the world, um, the first parameter was um, an int or a uh, D word as we call them in assembly, so it's going to be passed in ECX. Now to return um, have it in the appro appropriate appropriate Okay, to return an int you've just got to put it in the appropriate I think I spelled that right, appropriate size of RAX. 
So in order to, um, for example, negate the number that we're given, um, it's in ECX at the moment, we've got to put it into R A, uh, sorry, EAX, so mod, uh, move the value into EAX, ready to be returned, and then of course negate it, neg EAX. So our passing parameters function at the moment is going to give us negative uh, 67. Let's have a look, F5 to run. There he goes, negative 67. Okay, that's passing one parameter. Let's have a look at passing two parameters. Uh, maybe int a, int b. Uh, still returns an int. Maybe we go 189 and 23. Okay, so now we're passing two parameters. 189 will be in um, ECX and 23 will be in EDX. Let's make the um, function return the smallest of those, shall we? So how would we find the smallest? There's a couple of ways. We're going to do the slow way today with um, some jumps, but um, there's a much faster way that we'll look at later. Okay, so the first parameter is in um, ECX. Let's assume that um, this is the smaller. Did I say smaller or larger? Let's get the smaller. Assume it's op1, or the first um, something that we're given, the first number that we were given. Uh, then we do a comparison. So we're looking for the smallest here. If uh, edx happens to be larger, jg, return eax. Okay, so we've jumped down to this label. Oops, return eax. Um, mov, eax, edx, ret. Okay, what's happened here is... Um, We've assumed e uh, assumed ECX is smaller. Oops. Compare to EDX, and if the branch isn't taken, uh, if it falls through to here, we know that EDX was um, smaller than ECX. So we return EDX. If the branch is taken, jump if it's greater. Um, we come down to here and we've already got ECX uh, or the value of ECX in EAX so we are ready to return that ok I hope that makes sense it's a strange way to do it it's a very slow way to do it too uh, but we go over a fast way later so the smaller of the two integers is 23 if we get back something other than 23 ooh, yes alrighty now um, do note that we used JG, which is um, the signed um, conditional jump. So if we change this to negative 89, negative 189, oh gosh, what have I done? Um, we should get back now negative 189 instead of 23. Let's have a look. Negative 189, beautiful. Um, if we used, instead of... Uh, JG, JA, jump above. This is the unsigned comparison. And what's this going to do? It's going to return 23, believe it or not. There it is, 23. Why did that happen? Um, well, it's looking for um, the greatest number. And this number, because it's negative, we know that for a start it has the leftmost bit set to 1. So... Already, it's 2 to the power of uh, 31, if you're looking at it as an unsigned number. And 2 to the power of 31 is far, far greater than 23. Anyway, that's passing two parameters. Finally, let's have a look at um, passing four parameters. So we've got... Uh, let's... Short. We'll use short, shall we? Short B, short C, and short D. Okay, just uh, random numbers here, 2, 4, 6, 5, and for this one we'll, um, we'll just sum them together, shall we? Okay, um, alrighty, so the first one is in uh, CX, so we'll start by moving that into AX, then we'll add the second parameter, and we'll 
add the third parameter, which is R eight W, and finally to get the uh, sum, we'll add R nine W, and that will give us um, yeah the sum of the four numbers that we give it. Only uh, I have made a little mistake here. Ah, so if uh, EAX at the moment happened to have something in it, we're going to get a very strange number back. Let's have a look. So uh, logically this should give us 10, what, 17. It's not going to though. Oh. <laughs> uh, why did that come about? Um, if we have a look over here, um, the low 16 bits of uh, EAX are going to give us the answer. That's going to be um, what we're after. But we forgot to change this to um, short. So it's returning not only the low 16 bits of um, EAX or AX, but it's also returning whatever happened to be in uh, the top 16 bits, which uh, incidentally led us to a negative number. Anyway, if we change that to short, we should get the right answer. Beautiful. 17. And uh, any subsequent parameters, any more than four, are passed via the stack, which we'll examine in a future tutorial. Um, yeah, I hope that made sense. I hope that was useful. Passing parameters via the first four registers. Thank you for listening.